Marco Kircher from New Zealand versus Justin Campbell on table 11. And the final will be a race to 13. Alternate break.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we online. Guy the Mule Mavros here in the commentary booth. And wow, what a predicament we've got here now. Marco is in trouble. The score is five frames to two in a race to 13. At 13 is a long, long race, so we wouldn't be too, too worried. Um, but Justin Campbell's been on an absolute tear in the semi-finals against Mark Robertson. He played a set of pool that was absolutely world-class. Am I right there? Absolutely world-class. I was watching it from home. Uh, I had to go home and have a little quick shower and get changed after the bidding that I copped from Mr. Lewis Condon in the quarterfinals. Um, and I saw Justin playing at a level of pool that is just... I think the Chinese pool has been playing lately. Chinese uh, eight ball has been playing lately. He's actually improved his game. Uh, as you know, Chinese eight ball is played on the Chinese star tables, which is a small, real small pockets. And um, look at that beautiful line jump he shot here. With angle on the four to release the black and the yellow. Oh, it's actually... Hello, Mr. Blake Fogarty. How are you, my friend? Blake, Blake Fogarty, one of my uh, very good friends, talking to each other every day online. And Sean Abel is watching as well. Good to see. Speak of the devil, Mr. Lewis Condo. How are you, Mr. Lewis? Mab Ross, how you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm very well. The surgeon said that I'll be all right in a few days after the beating I copped in the quarterfinals from you. I don't know if it was a beating, but yeah, you're getting there. You played very well, man. It was a good match. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Thanks, bro. I'm sure you enjoyed it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, are you enjoying the way Mr. Justin Campbell's playing today? Yeah, he looks pretty serious. Um, playing a bit quicker than Marco. A bit quicker than Marco? Come on, man. A bit quicker. <laughs> That's the story at the moment is like a tortoise in the hair, isn't it? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, if the pattern of the balls have been different for both players, though. Marco seems to be awkward every time. Well, as I was saying earlier, I, I was talking about Marco in one of the previous matches. That obviously, my opinion is nine ball and ten ball. Marco is heads and shoulders above everyone in Australia, to be honest. But I believe that a lot of players in Australia can give it to him just in eight ball. I think eight ball's a game to give it to Marco. And uh, Justin Campbell has proved me right at the moment. Yeah, I, I support those comments. I think so as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, th I think that Marco is vulnerable to a few of our players here, though, whether it be nine ball, ten ball, or eight ball. Which, which players do you reckon would, could, could give it to him? Oh, I think Justin Sajig from New South Wales. You know, in eight ball, I, I've often said I think Justin Sajig is, is the best uh, eight ball player on a nine foot table in Australia. I've said it many, many times. I think he, he's adapted very, very well from two shot. Yeah. Um, I think Justin could, could spar with him quite nicely too in those shows. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, not sure how Marco would have gone. Do, do, do you think Justin Campbell's hooked himself here after Massey, like Massey? No, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we had this discussion a couple of years back. Oh, thank you so much for the beer. I don't actually drink alcohol when I commentate. Yeah, the, the, I, the police might come and get me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we, we had a discussion a few years ago. Where were, you were saying that maybe because we're now uh, mid-40s, we might be a little bit over the hill now. Do you think that's still the case, or are we still good to play? Oh, I don't know if you compare it to some of those guys overseas. Still winning tournaments in their 40s and 50s. Do you feel like... like I know I, felt, I feel like when I get deep in a tournament, I think, oh, man. I was just 10 years younger, I still had to be buzzing full of energy. And now I'm just a bit flat. I, you know, I, just, I just feel like I get more tired than what I used to get tired in tournaments. Yeah, it's a factor, but our tournaments are different to a board too. Um, you know, sometimes overseas you, you've got one match a day, you've got one match schedule. And you can prepare for it and pace yourself a bit differently. Here, definitely, it's a marathon. You know, um, I don't think you'd have too much trouble over there, Barry. You'd go right, mate, with that format. <laughs> well, we are. We are middle-aged men. <laughs> I mean, it's like in any sport you see how you don't get, you know, professional soccer players in their 40s and 50s, and mid-40s and 50s. You get them in their, you know, late teens, early 20s and, and early 30s, and that's it, and they retire. Same thing with women. You know, in, on one level, the model industry, you're not going to get a woman in their 50s competing with women in their early 20s. It's not going to happen. So, similar in this sport, I guess it's probably one of the only sports you could say, it, if you take care of your body, you keep yourself fit, you can compete at the high levels later on in life. 
Well, that's exactly why I wasn't a model, because, you know, I'm looking for longevity. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I made that choice, Barry. And, you know, and I had that choice, obviously. Um, you know, <laughs> so. I, hey, I mentioned earlier how good looking you were before we played the match. And, you know, it, it, it must be hard, you know, being so attractive. Well, it's not that. It's exertion levels, you know. I thought, pool looks like that kind of sport. That's for me. That's made for me, that game. <laughs> how about you, Barry? How do you think about that? All right. One thing I love about pool is that it is um, not just a game of skill, but also a game of knowledge. And this man at the table right now, Mr. Marco Toicha, he has a lot of knowledge. I still think that watching him play eight ball, you know, I watched him, obviously I watched him all weekend because he's uh, one of my favourite players. Um, I think at our two shot players we have in Australia, like your Mark Robertson's, uh, uh, Dixon, um, who else comes to mind? Michael's scary. These guys, I just think they see the patterns quicker than, than, than Marco does. He takes longer to play, and I think he's just used to playing nine ball and ten ball. I don't think he plays this game that off, is what I'm trying to say. We spoke about that earlier. They just jump at the table, the two shot players, and, and, and it just jumps out at, at them, the pattern. And they're right into it. Within five or ten seconds, they're, you know, onto their second, third ball. Yeah. Now, this situation, obviously, the only ball that's got this quiet in it. The nine ball, he has to get on the nine ball. That's the hardest ball. You should get on that now. And the rest is basically tic tac toe. Both Marco at the start of the frame after the break, he will map out um, the pattern that he's going. And, you know, he's, take, he's taken two or three minutes. Oh, yeah. You know. And the thing on those things, he's sticking to the pattern. I believe he's sticking to the pattern he's chosen. Four pot the first ball. Was mm -hmm. like, well, at the higher levels, I mean, people often say to me, oh, hey, hey Paul, you got all these choices. Well, not really, because uh, people, they make their pattern, and then they'll run them. Can you hear me? Yep. And they'll, they'll run the balls correctly, and usually it's just one or two balls you have to land on. You can't just land on three or four balls every time. Yeah. Uh, after you've mapped out the... It's like a nine-ball pattern after you've already mapped out the balls and made your decisions. Well, in eight-ball, it's more vital because there's so much traffic. Mm. You know, um, and you've said this before in the past, it's not really a rhythm game, it's, it's uh, I mean, you see, in 9-ball you can get that flow going, you can get those packs going. In 8-ball you're sitting down, standing up, sitting down, it's, it's almost always alternate break. And, uh, and it's basically people like Marco who can play without having to find rhythm, uh, do well in it. Justin Campbell though, he played a great semi-final, didn't he? He really shot. Mark out, didn't he? Mark, I didn't see him at the table at all. No, he handled it really, really well. But I just think if you've played all day and you're winning, the best comes out of you, you know? You can say that about each and every play, but the better players in the field soon will start trying mm. in the quarters on. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, you know, I had a fantastic. I, I had a. Gets by you, I had a really good day yesterday. Uh, I topped my group quite easily. Um, I dropped almost no frames the whole day, just like you did. I uh, came in the morning, had a tough first round match actually. Um, oh, that could have been. That could have been disastrous. Look at this. Mm. Look at this. See what I'm saying? The way that Justin Campbell gets out really quick, sees the patterns quick, runs him out quick, and then Marco's slow, and methodical. We've got a tortoise in the hair situation here. We have. And the question is. Will that affect Justin's um, rhythm or not? Because rhythm, Justin is a rhythm player. He is, and he gets frustrated yeah. with slow play. Oh, who doesn't? You know, but I, I think he's going to restrict the frustration when there's 3K at the end of the line. Um, I think he might be with it. Oh, let's see. But this is said on, on numerous occasions too, yes. he doesn't like the slow play. Mm. He does find it frustrating. Got a lot of players out there that do not like slow play. That part there where he's racking the balls. One thing that I spoke earlier about with Jackie Lai is it's great we've got no magic racks this weekend because um, it's 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 been an interesting. You don't know if you're going to get make the balls to break or not. And what a cool break from Justin. And that, ladies and gentlemen out there, is one of the reasons why Justin Campbell is in the final right now. He's got a fantastic break, racks the balls very well. Um, looking at it very quickly, it is open table, 15 and 1 go in the corner, 
almost set. He's allowed to play the 15 onto the one, uh, since it is an open table. Make his one ball, then run the patterns, if he wants to. And now he's walking around the table, taking his time. He's got one of those pool brains, hasn't he? He really does. Even when he talks to you, he says, hi Barry, how are you? It still looks like he's thinking about the pool table. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> Who knows what's going on up there, but... <laughs> he's a two-shot player. He's back there. Mm, is he really? He started, started out with two-shot players. That's two-shot players. He's looking at your shot, Barry. Yeah, this definitely makes sense. Instead of having to try and open him up using the 10. Uh, what the gap is with those two. Michael Morford from... He can hit the 15 full, oh, yeah. he pushes the one down. He's going Ralph first, yeah, that's it. He's trying to cut it. Ralph first, so he can push the 15 upwards. Mr. Michael Morford from Adelaide, how are you, my friend? He's asking, what's the close, closest pool to pool hall uh, there? I'm coming for work and I'll be in Wollongong or Kel Wollongong? Or Kebla Grange, please, Barry. Uh, if you're going to be in Wollongong, man, I have to know about Wollongong. That's like an hour out of Sydney. He's going to extract the four ball. Has he got there? No. I think he's okay. I don't think he's on it now, but I think it's there for later. Might end up taking the two so the blue. The other the angle rail. says no. He's going to have to play, like you said, he's going to have to play between the, the, the 14 and the rail. So let's see what he can do. And I feel like this frame is vital at the moment for him to keep that lead. I felt like Justin had to get off to a good lead against Marco, to be honest. I felt the same way. Mm. Is that a cool okay. piss? It's going to go in the middle pocket. Time in the middle. Another, another camera angle, Mr. Darren Lynch. It's not too bad. He's got a tough punch out here. He might have to drift over near that 14 on the far left side of the table. Mm. That ten ball. Running the one, the, the white line there with the white. Are you talking about the ten ball? The one there? Yeah. Yeah. He's missed the shot. He watched the nah, you know what he's saying? I know what he's saying. He's like, it rolled off. It rolled off. And this is the dream scenario here for Mr. Marco. And you know he's going to take his time. He's going to take plenty of time. Make sure he gets out. It's always great when your opponent has missed or potted most of the balls and left a completely open table for you. Yeah, no doubt. That tells me that, that positional shot Justin plays, and he mm. played it pretty quickly. He's happy with that distance, that mm. white and the seven ball. Seven balls down in the black. Oh, he would have nailed, he would have nailed that, yeah. Obviously from a conqueror. Marco taking his time to line up the shot. Action replay here. Watch it roll off. It will pull towards the right. Watch. Boom. Oh, he got a kick. He got a kick. And, and it's tracking to the right. And a track to the right. That's sick. Oh, that's a terrible shot for Marco. Like about an inch and a half there. He's feeling it, dude. This reminds me of when he played Bean in that final. He got off to a bad start and he just started to, the emotions started getting to him. Not that he's got emotions now because it looks really calm but um that was a that was a big miss from mr marco torture there miss of the day. he played really well against you yeah, then again he wasn't really afraid of you i, I mean i'm well, saying that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe physically but not on the table <laughs> I met Mr. For all you guys out there, I met Mr. Lewis Condo. What is it? 16, 17 years ago, I met you. <laughs> it feels so much. Oh, so look at this now. You see, we've seen three or four perfect frames now from both players, and then all of a sudden, back-to-back -back misses from uh, each one. And I tell you what, something tells me Mr. Marco Teutcher is not going to miss here. So Sanil, Sanil N says, Marco needs to work on patterns in the near future. Well, that's, a, that's a fair comment. I mean, it does take three minutes to decide. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you argue that? Yeah, I'd be shooting right now. But you know, Marco does this, when he's under the pressure, he slows right down. When he was playing the US Open uh, nine ball recently, which he did extremely well, he was one match away from making the top 16. 
uh, to the knockout stages. Huge effort, because 256 players. He lost his first round match and won eight or nine matches on the loser's side. Massive effort. And I was watching everything I could watch that was showing clips of him playing. And he was playing really slow, really deliberate, and just lots of safety play. Remember, he beat Wu Cha Ching 9 2 about six months ago as well, which is that's no mean effort right yeah, there. That's a huge result. So, Mr. Maka Torch is not going to be intimidated by anybody in Australia. Sorry to say. We don't mind taking this time. It's just it can't be frustrating as viewers. You know, we're passionate about the game, we've got the patience to watch it. But it can intrude on, on, on you know, the viewers. Mm. What do you guys think out there at home in the YouTube land? Make a comment down below. We've also got the famous Lewis Kondo sitting here on my right hand side. I'm his partner, Barry the Mule. I'm actually the sidekick today. Normally I'm the star, but today I'm the sidekick because I'm next to him. Ask us a couple questions on the cue ball, on the, on the chat, and we'll answer them for you. Do you guys prefer a game like this where there's no shot clock? Or do you think there should be a shot clock? Yeah. And if you do, how much? I'd love to see an eight ball tournament in Sydney, or sorry, in Australia, which has got like a 15 second shot clock on it. 15 seconds? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see people <laughs> run into the ball. Are you serious? Absolutely. Let's see people. Let's see people's natural instincts come out. Let's see how quick they read the patterns and see how good they play. Well, I have a small bet with you. Robbie doesn't enter that tournament. <laughs> Robbie Fulbari? <laughs> All right, one good shot here. Soft screw. Perfectly in line. Plum on the black, looking at a 6-4 scoreline, and it's going to be Marco's break next. Big frame. Is yeah. either going to be 7-3 or 6-4? Big, big frame. Yeah, makes it a match now. Yeah. In a race to 13, it's a long race. And that frame had more exchanges than any other. Mm. Might have been three visits each, possibly. Mr. Blake Fogarty says, Hey Baz, thanks for some entertainment. Slow play is killing the vibe. Oh. Richard Minow says, I agree, 15 seconds would be, would be good. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Because, I mean, I'm known as being a slow player. Whether it's 9 ball, 10 ball, 8 ball, I'm known to be a slow player. This is my, but when I compare myself to a lot of players overseas even, I'm about average. I'm not really that slow. Yeah. You know, it's the skill, skill, the commentary too that can hold the viewers. Aaron. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're doing a good job. I appreciate it. I, uh, I work. Uh, I've been doing commentary with uh, Dan Lynch and Kimo for over 12, 13 years, and I've been focusing a lot now with Mr. Stuart Rogers of Q World yes. for the last year and a half, two years. Um, we do a lot of promotion over there, and uh, to be honest, Stuart. Uh, He's actually a really, really good guy to work with. Uh, he's got some great ideas. Yeah. And look forward to doing some new things in the future. I also spoke to Henry today with the APPF. I'm, I'm available to help and work with everybody because I'm passionate about the, the game. Yeah. And you know, I'm not gonna be cutting fish the rest of my life, as you know. So I'll be transitioning back into pool full time in the near future, five, 10 years away. I'll be opening up my new club in Sydney. Uh, there's plans for that to happen, uh, but not just yet. I'm still good enough to work in seafood. And when I'm too old and account to that, I'll be opening up a club. It's just, it's, it's going to happen. Right. I need someone to supply me some tables. You know anybody, Mr. Lewis Combo? Yeah, I do. And I'll make sure I'm there for opening night, okay? I want to invite. <laughs> you got it, mate. <laughs> Look forward to that. That'd be your second club, yeah? Yeah, it'd be my second yeah. pool room. And I really do miss my first pool room. It was built in, in Cyprus and uh, it was a great club, just the wrong time uh, to open up a club just before the whole country goes bankrupt. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying, look how fast Justin sees the patterns and executes. Again, in fairness, it is a pretty straightforward pattern. So, some of the comments here, can we just go back up a second, there's comments. Uh, Jamie Ether Therrington says, Shot clock, this Marco is taking the busy times. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Blake Fogarty says, 40 seconds, maximum shot clock. Yeah, so it seems like there's a consensus that most players don't want a, a shot clock. 
Uh, Benji Mon Wilsh says, random comment as to why not many viewers. Everyone is used to small, but two shot on this channel and don't play big ball games. Unless you played a lot of big ball games, it's hard to learn the respect. Well, um, it was Mystic. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Wow. Well, two shots bigger in Australia than, than the American pool is. But around the world, uh, this game is bigger. Um, but in general, they don't really play much 8-ball, do they? They play more 9-ball and 10-ball. You were a fantastic 9-ball player once upon a time. You know, but you know, I saw, I saw, I see it sometimes when you play, you know, and I notice the way you move around the table, you know, it's, uh, I actually mentioned, um, I remember Sean Budd saying to me once that, you know, you were the guy that he couldn't beat for a long time. 20 years, yeah, he tried to shake me down. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. Shake you down, shake you down. <laughs> and you do it like a rock. So I'm going to beat you one day, and that, that went on for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we stayed at my house one one week actually, Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Going back about 15 years. And, uh, uh oh, uh oh. Don't get upset, Justin. Keep it cool. He he's um he's susceptible to getting losing his calf and then just going on tilt the rest of the match. He's just, and if Marco takes, you know, two, three minutes a shot as well, it just magnifies. In a way, he's like the Australian Elf Strickland. <laughs> you know what I mean? He really is, but with, with but younger and better looking. <laughs> so were you saying he'll stay at your place one day, did he? Oh, Mr. Yeah, Sean yeah, Budd? Yeah. And um, anyway, I had a well-stocked bar before he arrived. Oh, I, I see where this is going. I don't know what happened to it a week later. <laughs> It was, I, I, I was impressed, that's all I've got to say. And I thought, he's going to hit me up, because I had a table there mm. at home. He's going to hit me up every day mm. until he pinches the set off me and he can find the same he beat me. Yeah. And I tried everything to have a practice session with him, just a bit of fun. Wouldn't have it. Really? And pick the queue up for the whole week. Mm, that's interesting. You know? Yeah. So, but probably for the best, you know. That's interesting. We had an it's... awesome week going to the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great. Great fun. Well, still, still Marco, owes me a few Marco bottles of drinks. He'd always replace them, but I'm still waiting for that. What is Marco Tuicha doing here? He's moved the ball around. He's still looking at the shot. Obviously, this is the ball to take. It opens up everything else around it. Okay, here we go. We're off and racing, guys. As you can see, he's removed that ball. Now he's going to move the 11, which is another hard ball to get on. The rest is going to be all close to pockets. Cue ball control is a must here. He's using that Revo shaft. I'm not too fond of the Revo shaft, by the way. But he's using that Revo shaft. He plays very well with it. This is an important find here. Uh, it feels like they're all important because you know, he, at the moment you see that the lead that um, Justin Campbell had is starting to slowly diminish. And also his rhythm is starting to come up, come undone. Uh, but Justin's played this game for a long time. He's also played Chinese. He did very well in the Chinese eight ball recently, I heard. I, I was impressed with that. Yeah. He beat the world top 16 and you know, Chinese player. If, if you watched some of those sets he was playing, I was really, really impressed with that. Um, well, I, I was actually surprised at, at, at the level that he maintained for that week. And those tables, there's just no forgiveness. In oh, those, yeah. pockets. those pockets are brutal. He's got a natural line here. Is that the third hand? Oh, it's a 12. It's a 12. Oh, and he's got another one at the top rail. He's going to bridge over the 10. Mm, I kind of like taking the 10 now, as I see he got better queuing. Oh, he's a tall fellow. I'm going to follow him. Leave it for the black. He's he's very tall. The last for the black. I don't like the shot. Oh, it's a bit straight. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I like taking the 10 ball first. So you can get yourself a nicer angle. You know, and you're not bridging over the ball. I mean, he is six foot three or whatever he is. He's a very tall fellow. These Dutch players, these Dutch players, they're all tall, skinny, good-looking, handsome. Hate them. 
and talented. The soft get talented. Double Hayden. It's the glove. The glove with love. Oh, he's landed the plum. So left the 10 ball there is a good finishing ball to stop it when you're on the black. He looks very determined, very focused. Quite a few of my friends uh, in Sydney, Mr. Lewis Kondo, um, said to me, you know, Marco's going to this tournament, no one can beat him. And, uh, and I said, I, I disagree. I think there's a few people that can give it to him. I really do. Um, there's a handful. Handful of players. Yes, Mr. Marco Jackie. makes it 6-5. We have a match, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm? Why am I? Oh, Wasim. Ah, Wasim, how are you, my friend? We've got a photograph together. Uh, why not a fond of this shop? Well, look, I was actually the very first person in Australia to try the Revo. Uh, I had pre-ordered it, uh, I think it was 18 months. Who won the lag? We don't know who broke, who broke the lag. Can you find out? Is it possible to break last? A bit of... Uh, give a second, we'll find out. We'll look at the video footage, see who broke first, who won the lag. It was a good camera angle shot there of uh, Justin rolling the ball. The, t the table does roll off. I know because we played that match on that table and it rolls off a little. Who broke first? Justin broke first. So it's your break, Michael. Let's go to 0-0. Zero, zero. So you're breaking Who off. broke 0-0? Zero, zero? It's odds at the moment. Maybe, unless they messed it up. Who won the lag? Go on. Yeah, that's it. Who's, who's there? Justin, yep. Yeah. yeah, so it's Marco's break. Um, so a question here from Yusuf, why not a find of this shaft? Like I said, I was the very first person to try the shaft, and I was the very first person to buy the shaft. And I worked with it for 18 months. And that, in that period, I, I'm actually... Is that, is that those black shafts? Yes. You, you like those black shafts? No. Uh, the, the black shaft that Lewis is referring to, um, I've never been fond of, to be honest, and I've never actually tried. But I've the Predator, the I've Predator Revo shaft I've tried. I've personally <laughs> never taken them on. I, mean, <laughs> I just kept right away from them. <laughs> <laughs> Once black. <laughs> Mr. Jackie says, once you try black, you'll never go back. Okay, Mr. Jackie. <laughs> it's time to restore some... Uh, some, <laughs> some sanity in the commentary box. I, um, so I worked with it for 18 months, the Revo. It, it, it's very pingy, very tingy. I know they've made adjustments since then. I've actually ordered a brand new one. I've actually owned three Revo shafts, and I've ordered a brand new one, which is coming uh, from Vegas next month from me, uh, where they've made some adjustments, and it's not as pingy as it used to be. I just found that I, I had it really overspanned the balls. And uh, if I was a younger fellow, I'd definitely start playing with it. But I mean, it's darker. My eyes aren't as good as it used to be. I need a white shaft to cue the ball. I know it sounds strange. I never thought of that. You know, it's dark. It's, it's it just. That makes sense. I just, I've been playing pool for the last 20 years with, with a cue, and I started off playing snooker. And, and uh, going to a black shaft for me was very difficult. But a lot of young players you see nowadays, they're really fond of them, and they play really well with them. So uh, I, I guess everyone's different, and everyone prefers different things. I mean, you should see the cue that Lewis Condo plays with. That's a, that, that's got like pink chalk on the ferrule. That's what I noticed today. It looks, it looks, it's got pinkness on the ferrule. It's, it's, it's an a old wooden shaft. Cue. I've been using it for yeah. 25 years. Exactly, it's what you're used to. I've beaten three world champions that cue. Wow, I should nothing, be honoured. Nothing wrong with that cue. Three, which 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 are the world champions you've you, you smacked with that cue? All of them. Oliver Ortman, Ralph, Sukay, Nils Fajin. Nils Fine. <laughs> well, it, dep it depends what country you're from. Okay? <laughs> and if you're trying to picture the spelling as you say it, you might get it really wrong like I just did. <laughs> what's, what's happened? Didn't... Uh, what's happened here? Did, did Marco break? Make a ball off the break? We're all starting to lose our focus here at the Focus. Uh, eight ball open of 2019. It's all this talk about those black shafts. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'll tell you what I did try this weekend, which I really enjoyed. I tried um, Tan, Tan Yuen's uh, MezQ. He's got the new Ignite Shaft, yeah. uh, which is what he Mario plays with. Good shot marker. And it's it's a very, very good shaft. I, I, I like that very much. So, um, When you play four or five shots with a shaft, they all feel great, don't they? The question is, how good can you play with them over a long period of time? And do you want to play with them? You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of swapping, chopping and changing cues. I just, I, I just don't get it. Your subconscious mind tunes into what, how your cue's throwing, mm. and, and it's got to it's got to become like your third arm, and it can take years. It can take a decade. A fourth to, arm in my case, mate. You know, I'm the mule for a reason. To really, really be confident in, in what it's doing, and I'm talking about the power shots, Barry. You know, mm -hmm. when you're throwing heaps of side on, and you can get these extremes of throw, and all, all, all these things are going on. And I just think when you start introducing different cues all the time, you try this with, one, with this that. with this shaft that with this cue that Marco uses, it has almost no throw. Puts a lot of spin on the ball, so you can stay very close to centre. Put half a tip of side on the on the cue ball and get a lot of side. It really spins the ball yeah. a lot. Well, all I'm saying is obviously it work. There's guys oh. that have won tournaments with those. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, all I'm saying is pick a cue and stick with it. Very good advice. Yeah. That's There's a guy that I know who owns 31 Qs, and he would be good if he took that advice. I'm talking to the wrong person about yeah. this, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I chop and change Qs more than I do my women. <laughs> Jeez, I've never seen a man with so many apps on his phone. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Unbelievable. I have to take some notes down. This elementary black ball to level the match, and here's where we're going to see. Here's what you see, this is what I'm saying, this is where we're going to see the um, temperament of Justin. Can he keep his cool? It looks like he's racking the balls very fast. He he's got to calm down. He threw the down. white up the other end of the table for himself and it's come back. He's got to calm, he's got to calm right down because you know he's got the game. And we have always known he's got the game, we always have. The question is does he have the mental focus, the, the, the maturity to play this game at the highest level? Nothing's happened dramatic for, to throw him off the rails. He'll be okay. You know, he's, that's determination coming out. He's not angry or pissed off like that something's happened and they've had an argument or... They can't the hear Lewis I, very well. I think he's okay. The same they can't hear Lewis very well in the commentary, in the comments. Maybe just cut the kid on your head, Lewis, and we'll... Yeah. This way. This way. Like that. Just sit down the back of your head. That's it. Sit there. Can they hear me now? I hope so. They came down from Mig Ferra okay. into burned out Blue of Jay. This is the important. That just fired and just shit itself in Jutland Parade. Very important break here from Justin. He smashed him. I have a feeling he's made the one in the middle. I have a feeling if these are open balls, he's going to run them out in double quick time. And the stripes are really, really appealing. Yeah, they are. He might take the, is it the 10 ball? Bottom left of the screen. He ideally would like to use the 11 ball to get back up, but because the nine ball's in the corner. He's staying pocket, here, he's staying down yeah. pitch. He might clear the 12 as well, the pink after this 11. Mm, mm. Perhaps just play a little cannon into the, uh, into the five with the white ball. Clear the black too. Like that, uh -oh. and then get himself into trouble. Uh oh. You see, when things are going well, they're going well, right? Going very well, but then... He might still have a shot with a 15 ball, just glazing you don't, you don't past that. You, you don't want to get out like that. No, but at least he's got an option. Michael Lumsden asks, which shaft are you playing with now, Barry? I'm playing with a Greek handmade wooden shaft, Canadian maple. Uh, it's called the IQ Infinity Shaft. Made by my friend uh, Dimitris, who owns IQ Shafts in Greece, Athens. He makes uh, very high-end custom cues. Uh, uh, they're very expensive, between $1,000 to $10,000 a cue. And each shaft is worth $650. But the wood he chooses uh, has been aged for over 30 years. Um, and it's uh, all handmade. Very, very nice wood. I highly recommend those shafts. That's what I like to play with. 
and uh, he can make him for any. You can just contact IQQs through Facebook. Tell him that you spoke to Barry the Mule, and um, they can make you a shaft. Very, very good. They can do it any joint you that you want. So here's the key. The key shots this rack right now. What a recovery, though. Yeah, I know. You know. Oh, can he land plum on this twelve? He's played through the window. He said, "It's just it, handbrake." What Did a great he shot. from to the window. Wow. What a great shot. That shows you the touch that this guy's got. Well, I sense that frustration. It wasn't anger. It was determination. Mm. He started throwing the ball to rack the balls up. The start of this frame. He's like, "I'm going to get you. I'm going to mm. smash you." Look at that. That'll do. Oh yeah. Come on, Justin. All gone quiet in the commentary booth. We want him to focus. I remember well the very first time I've seen... That was a good, oh, was good, good That's a big out. Mm. very first time I saw Justin Campbell play, uh, he was a teenager. And he rocked up to an Australian event uh, where I rocked up with my good friend Jeffrey Yu. Mm. Um, you remember Jeffrey? I do. How's he going? Well, he's, uh, he's very good. He's got uh, his family and... Uh, He's a, as you know, he's a lawyer. He works full time. Yes. And uh, yeah, he's a very successful man. Uh, anyway, long story short, we all decided, decided to have some practice sessions. I was playing with somebody on one table, and Justin Campbell, my friend Jeffrey, decided to practice with Justin Campbell <laughs> on the table next to us. And they played about two sets, and I think Justin popped one ball. Not Justin, <laughs> Jeff popped one ball. <laughs> Justin just kept running out and running out and running out and running. This was in Adelaide. And then Jeffrey goes to me, Have you seen this kid play? Like, yeah, I've seen him play, I haven't seen you play for the last two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Campbell just kept running balls left, right, and center. And that's when I knew this kid had talent, you know. And we all know he's got talent. He left the game for like eight, nine years. Who, J Justin, Justin Campbell, yeah. Really? Yeah, he really dropped off. Wow. Well, he accelerated from the age of 14, probably to about 21, 22 mm -hmm. years of age. And then, yeah, he kind of, we didn't see him for, for a long while. Big break here needed from Marco. Nice connection. And that's one of the best, better breaks he's done today. Yeah, that was good timing. Using his BK rush cue. Very good break cue. Again, the pattern just doesn't jump out at me straight away. There's a few little sticky spots here. I mean, the, the smalls are no good. They're blocked up a little bit down that top right corner that, as we look at the screen. So he's got to look at the stripes. What's his in ball? Is it the nine? Is that his only option? Yeah, I think his first opening ball would be the nine and he's going to play the, the combine and try and maybe check the yeah. ball and get the 12 in the middle. Yeah. Check the white ball when he's playing the 11 on the 14. Or he can play the kiss. It really depends on how he's feeling, but I tell you what, he must be feeling good at the moment. He was down 6-2 at one stage. 5-2 at one stage, he's, sorry. He's and picked his pattern. Oh, I yeah. think he's going to hit this ball in the next 5 or 10 seconds and just keep... He's going to continue after this pretty quickly. He's picked the pattern quicker than he any played, other time. Yeah, he's played through, the, through the gap. I don't got another know. angle here. Go another angle here, Jared. Dan? I don't know if that's where he wanted to be. Is that? Harry. I I, th I would have thought he would have been trying to be on that side of the line. He's really played between the one and the seven. He's double dipped. He's double dipped for the ten ball here on the left. Oh, you're saying he's played two way shot? Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say one thing that you notice with um, with with Marco is when he picks his patterns, he executes them the way he wants to. Mostly. That's I said that earlier. Yeah. Which is quite impressive. That's the kiss. That's that's the carom he's playing. Oh, he's. But he's been a bit unfortunate. He's got no easy lay. He might be lay. a stick in the mud here. He might be in all sorts of trouble. You don't have to be dead to be stiff, do you? That is mm. unbelievable. Surely he's only got the twelve ten combination, and of course they're so close. We're going to need a referee here. They're so close. Oh, he's going to kick it. Wow, he's unlucky. <laughs> that that was stiff. Did it get to the rail, Dan? 
Mm. He's going to go Ral first here. Try and make the 11. And then if, get shape somehow. Well, if he does pocket the 11, the natural kiss will be into the orange five ball here. And where he ends up is... No one knows. No one knows. Well, good hit, call, my friend. He's hit the five. And again, he's good come call. up dry. He might better sneak this inside the six top right cushion, top right pocket. Mm. He's going to have to pull um, off a big shot here it's again. It's not, not happy days for Marco. I think he's got half a pocket with this 10. He's going to try and zing this up the other end of the table inside that, that green six on the top right pocket. Well, he's reached, he's looking at trying to jump shot to the 12. That might not be a bad option. He's very good at jumping. But he's reached what I call the point of no return in an eight ball rack. Yeah. yeah. It's a point in an eight ball rack where you just can't play safe anymore, and this is one of those points. He's going to play... What's he pointing out there? He's, he's going combination. the cannon. He's going the combination. Well, fair enough. 12, uh, 10, 12 combination. Okay. He's going to have to be deadly accurate for this, like a sniper. This, this shot requires... Because of the distance of the balls, especially the 12 being so far away from yeah. the pocket, this is not easy. I don't, I don't like his chances in executing this shot. But then again, my video is only an option, right? Yeah, we can't really tell from here if the, that 10 does go through past the 6. Well, I'd like to see how long it takes him to shoot this I, ball. I would slow roll the 10 up near the 6. Because and if at least it, block it, the in pocket. a rover, yeah. 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 Um, I think maybe... And I can see from here, that 10 ball actually passes the 6. We can't feel confident if he's avoiding it. You know, this is maybe 3 out of 10 for a top pro, top 20 in the world. This is not easy. Oh, good shot. Top? Did you say top 20 in the world? Yeah, 3 out of 10, they'd get those. <laughs> that it is a very good it shot. Was, they weren't lined world up. Class. They were off skewer. World class. Well, you earned that frame. That's a good and out. He was unlucky, though. He was unlucky to be in those predicaments. That's a really good out. Seven at peace here. Justin I'm enjoying Campbell. this now, Barry. Oh, thank this you. This is a great match. Because I'm here. Well, I wasn't thinking that, but yeah, you know, that, that too. It's one of the factors. Now you mentioned it, I have to think about it. I was watching this and on you're the not way bad. down here. You're okay. Thanks, man. I'll get you some apps, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Justin's the it only feels guy like that's they've just started, actually. Whoa. Do you know what I mean? Like, they've got... Yeah, now it's race, race to six. six. Justin's the only guy that's been able to keep up with Marco all weekend. Marco's won by margins at all yeah, these big matches. Margins. Yeah. Big, and we're talking about strong opponents. Yes, yeah. Uh, ben Yunnan. What was the score with Ben Yunnan? 7-1. That, that's close. That's... <laughs> to being a, a, a zero <laughs> score. <laughs> You know, and then you got, yeah, and then you had the other guy, Dixon, he beat him like 8-2 or something, 8-3. Yeah. I mean, Justin Campbell, win or lose, he's at least gone toe for toe. But he's seen his, his um, big lead to this. I can tell you, Justin is taking no notice of Marco's victories today and yesterday. Mm. All the margins. He would be taking no notice. There was one guy that beat him in his groups yesterday. Beat Justin? Yeah, no, no, who beat um, Marco and his group. Oh, thanks, Barry, for mentioning that. <laughs> Race to three. Race to three. Yeah, you beat but, uh, let's just three one, didn't you? Let's just put that in the local paper. <laughs> <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually more frames that I won off him yesterday than I did today. <laughs> the race to three. <laughs> <In a> race, <laughs> on a race to ten, I won less frames. <laughs> he come short he has yeah you know he's come short he was playing for the one in the corner in the same pocket there you just can't get away with a little quick chit chat when Justin's shooting can you <sighs> next time you look at the screen it's, there's it's three or four like, balls down in all fairness I just think Justin needs to slow down a, a touch just a touch he's got really no option now but to play some kind of well, he's gonna pump this four in and then what what do you play from here do you play for the oh, orange I like, five I like the one ball Kisses the, the, the big ball, moves the five down. What's he going to do oh, here? I don't know. He might be lining up for the double after this. He missed it. He's missed it by half a diamond. Two inches out. That's 
not what he wanted. That's a bad miss. Yeah, and this is really, in all fairness, every ball's got a pocket. Uh, this is not a hard pattern for Marco. Marco's going to leapfrog here, get in front and then have the break. That'll like be the take... first time he's hit the lead. Oh, yeah, if he you closes know what he his to... frame out. He's a great front runner though. He'll protect that lead. Mm. He'll want to stretch it. I just want to say a big thank you to Mr. Jackie Lai. Oh, oh how are you Jackie? You're behind me all this time? Yes, I was not worried because you're not Greek. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, hosting this event and um, do you want to just take a moment to say a very big thank you to our sponsors? Uh, Fu Ching, was it? How do you spell? I was calling him Fu King all weekend. <laughs> but it's actually Fu Ching. Is that how you say it? It's Fu Ching, yep. Fu Ching, not Fu King. It's a Q. Fu Queen. Um, Fu Xing. I'm not going to swear. That's not swearing, no. No, honestly, it's, a, it's a, the association of Fu Xing. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Melbourne, uh, Melbourne World Friendship Association of Fu Ching. Thank you for sponsoring this event. It was great. And having Barry and Lewis commentating the finals. And thanks to all the players. And especially Barry's commentating as well and drive all the way from Sydney. And Marco Turcher fly all the way from New Zealand. No, don't mention Marco. He's coming to... No, don't mention him. No, no. Barry, say my name again. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you very much, so Jackie. You, you always take good care of us every so time the, we come here. So the sponsor is a Q manufacturer? No. No? What's the company? What's their format? What's their base? What do they do? They're an association, like a friendship association. Ah, I beg your pardon. Like a, okay. Like a group. Thank you, you guys. Thank you for your support. Good on you. And maybe we should thank Carl, the pool room owner from Focus. Yes, where is he? Carl, thank, thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you for today. Thank you and yesterday. Thank you. And thank you very share, much share, for the alcoholic share, share. drinks that we've been given to do commentary. We're e easily bribed here in the commentary booth. Plenty of bribery going on today. That's a good shot too. Because of the proximity of the five ball, he wanted to be straight or a little bit low on this ball. Yeah. And he's, he's basically about right. Maybe a touch high. But just a soft screw back and he's on the nine, so. I think he might punch two rails here. Really? Don't know if he's happy with a soft screw. I don't know if he wants to punch two rails. It's it's a big, big, that corner pocket's got big ears. Well, I'm gonna say he's gonna punch two rails here, Barry. Bottom left, he's gonna tickle the corner pocket here with the white ball. Bottom left or bottom right? Bottom left, he's gonna tickle the bottom left pocket with the white. Oh, bottom left pocket, yes. Yeah. Pocketing, sorry, the, yeah, the stripe in the in the bottom right pocket. Nah, I, I, I'm going to disagree. I think it's going to tap. Oh no, you're right. There you go. Let's have a look. Nice. Tap the five, yeah. The nine's over the bag, so. Marco doesn't take many risks. He's not one of those flamboyant just, players. You know, it, it just bores me. With, no, that was fine. That was a good shot. <laughs> Boss, <yeah. laughs> That's obviously that was the right shot. <laughs> He's just one of those guys that doesn't take a lot of chances. Yeah. I just I feel he's not in yet. He can get bad contact on the nine. There's a bit of distance. I mm. would have punched two rails. But I'm not at the table. The angle might have been different. I'd like to be two foot away from the nine ball here, opposed to shooting where he is at the moment. Up and down with the white ball here. One, two... Slow, slow down, slow down. It's a good shot. Beautiful, for the 12. Safety. He, he could have landed a metre short and still been on the ball in the centre. Mm. So he's picked the right angles there. Which is the thought pattern. And if you get those opportunities, you can see shots like that. If you can see a line, ladies and gentlemen, where you can run the white ball, and it can stop a metre short, it can overrun half a metre short, and you're still on a ball. That's something you're actually very good at. By all means, take it. Your decision-making... Especially when playing rotation games, it was always top notch. Commentating quite a lot of your matches in the past. And you, yeah, you do a very yeah. good job deciding, making good decisions on the table. Oh, I think Marco's good done control. to smell blood. Good control. He's done to smell blood. Like a shark in the water. Like a fat chick at the cinema eating he the popcorn. He is entering familiar territory. He's getting oh, yes. his, he's getting in front. 
Yes, it's yes. It's been his home turf the last two days. First time in the final, he'll be in front. From 5-2 down. Be 8 7 five. He's loving life at the moment. And one guy starting to feel the heat now is Justin Campbell. Who's really... Hasn't really done that much wrong, to be honest. A couple of lax positional shots, really. And then from being that far ahead, you're now behind by one rack. Well, they both had that scratchy frame where it could have gone 7-3 or it went 6-4. The one six, that you four. mentioned was yeah. a big, yeah, a turning point, if you yeah. will. Yeah, and, and that's where they sort of both experience a bit of, you know. Yeah. So there you have on the screen there our top 16 players. And the Marco Teutcher's run was... Uh, where did he come from? Let's have a look. He beat Alvin and Gito 7-4 in the first match. And I watched some of that match. Alvin played very well. Uh, there was a table next to me. And then you had Ben Union and Marco. Unfortunately, Ben just didn't get the table much. Uh, Marco Torture beat Temujin Dixon. He's a fantastic player. Yeah, uh, look, Very people, player. people picked him maybe to win the event. Yeah, but... Uh, and, he's, and he's squared him away at 8-2. Wow. And dealt, then, of course, dealt with him. The crowd favourite, Lewis Kondo. Marco beat Lewis Kondo 10-3. That's so unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. Well, that's just what happened. Run. And uh, Justin Campbell, his run was, he was a second qualifier. He beat Frank Gabriel, 7-2. He beat Peter Butterworth, he's a good player, 7-3. Strong he win. He beat Jay, Justin, uh, Jake McCartney, another good player, 8-3. And he beat, oh, did he? In the first round. God. Doesn't really make a difference there, but well, ju actually, Justin, ju Justin squared them away solely too. Justin Campbell has beaten, yeah, you know, one, two, three, four very good players, including Mark Robertson, ten four in the final. Very big leads. You know what? Ju Justin's semi-final performance was pretty solid, man. That was top-notch stuff. He dealt with Mark really convincingly. I'm starting to get excited, Barry. I've been excited the whole time. If I was, um, you were asleep an hour ago. What are you talking about? I was. I was. Yeah. I, I wasn't feeling well um, uh, during our look at that three ball. See it rolled a little bit <laughs> during our, our match. I wasn't feeling 100 percent enough. It was over and I got beat. I was feeling terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in all <laughs> fairness, I, I, it's been very cold here in Melbourne, and I had a 12-hour drive here, and I'm driving 4 a.m. tomorrow. I'm leaving and driving back up again, and yeah. I just I just need to go home and have a bit of, like a warm shower. I mm. uh, took a couple of Panadols and had a little nap, knowing they'd be coming back to the final. Mm. Um, because the final was starting after 7 o'clock at night, which is quite late, with all those breaks. It's 4 a.m., Barry, you're on machine. Yeah, I've got to get back to Sydney early, I've got things to do tomorrow. Justin tried to hold for this blue, the two. I paint the kiss. And I'm not sure he achieved it. But he has got cover, he knew that. He's got the seven on the bottom row here, bottom left. A must-ridden rack, I feel now. For he's Justin slowed Campbell. down a little bit. He seems to be concentrating a little bit more. He played. Uh oh, I don't oh, like this. Is he in trouble? This. He's hit the rail first. He's so what's happened is he hasn't contacted the seven on the way through. He's actually hit the rail first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it's clipped the seven in. So he's basically missed and a shot. Yeah, yeah. Strike, yeah. If that was, um, if that ball was off the rail, he wouldn't have pot potted it. And that's why he's ended up there. Like I said, this was, I felt, a very big frame here for Justin. Still not, not disaster. Even if you lose this frame, goes down 9-7, he's still in the game. It's not over yet. He's going to try and cut the six. This is trick he, shot time. Is he pointing at a jump shot? Ralph first. No, no, he's pointing at the six. He's going to go Ralph. Yeah, so he's going to go Ralph first to make this ball. This is, this is, um... Key to this shot, if you're going to flick it in with side, which means you're going to hit, the cue ball's going to hit the rail first, tons of side, which flicks into the six. Yeah. The you thing have I to hit it delicately. The you thing I don't like the about this shot, work. Lewis, before he shoots it is if he, if he doesn't make it, he's going to open up the nine and 15. Just like this, just like this. See what I said? He's going wow. to open them up, just like I said. Wow. That's what I didn't like about that shot. It was dangerous for that. I would have played a kick shot on the two and try to block up that 10. Because he already had one, he had one problem area here. He just opened it. Good call, Barry. Thanks, mate.
Mr. Marco Torture. You know what animal I think of every time I see him? Don't say it, Perry, for crying out loud. No, way. serious. <laughs> Please don't say I it. I think of, when you I see him... You can't press delete, dude. <laughs> don't say it. Just, no, I liken him. <laughs> Let's talk about his, his position dude, after the like, shot. <laughs> his personality on the table, if I could give him personality, is like a panther. A black panther sitting in the tree waiting to pounce. You don't see him coming. I'm sorry, I intruded on you. I didn't know where you're going with that. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. Like he's just he's just very patient. You know, Panther sits there patiently, waits for his opportunity, and then poof, pounces and kills his prey. Do they? It's, well, yeah, that's what they oh, do. Okay. okay. Um, and they're very sleek. Like he's very sleek, slender, yeah. tall. He and he's got a black shaft. Slowly, he's got the black shaft. The black shaft that yeah. you love so much. Yeah. I didn't say I liked it. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I never said I liked it. Yeah, but, but have you tried it yet? See, I, and I, and I did like, mention I've did, never gone there. Have you there. ever tried the one? No. No, hang no. on a minute. Okay. All right, don't twist any shit around you, Barry, okay? <laughs> Please. You know, you don't expect, this is the thing with Marco, when you see him amongst the balls, you just do not expect him to miss. And his demeanor and his temperament right now is really... I mean, he proved himself for oh, me. Hang on, I've got one here. For me, he proved. Is that yours? Yeah, that's that's extra. He's proved himself to me a lot when he when he played in that U.S. Open, in the U.S. Open nine ball this year. He beating all those players. We're talking about some big name players he beat. Uh, he proved how cool and calm he is under the pressure. And he's been in multiple world champions, and he's in the top fifty in the world at the moment. Fifty one, I think. Yeah, fifty one, and yeah. his Fargo rate is ridiculous. So. Yeah, he's a, he's a top-notch player. Speaking about Fargo rates, do you, are you planning on putting the results of this weekend's event in the Fargo system? I'll try to collect the guy, um, the Fargo rate. Fargo rate, yes. Yeah, um, I'm going to go for the Last two tournaments I won, no one put any, 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 um, Barry, put talk any about, statistics in. Let's tell the viewers what the Fargo rate is. Yeah, the Fargo rate's a system that was developed in the States, uh, where everyone around the world, basically, whoever you, it's like a web of results. So it's a big, um, like if you say, like a computerized platform, which uses, uh, which uses, matches up players all over the world. And so when you make a win, you put the results in and say, let's say I play you and you beat me, okay? Then later on, I go play Jackie, I beat Jackie, and Jackie plays somebody else. That all connects into connects with all the results and it gives nice. you a percentage of how good you nice. are. So yeah. anybody, like there's, a, there's about a handful of players, 10 players in the world that are over 800 Figo. You've got Shane Van Boning, you've got your Wuchaching list players, and then you've got someone like him who's in the high 700s. And then you've got someone like me who's in the high 600s, and it shows you the level that, that I'm at. I'm about two, three levels under Marco. Okay. According to that statistic. What a great, what a great thing. It's fantastic. I, I like that. That is fantastic. And it's also involved, in, what it helps us with is also in the future there's going to be a lot of betting in pool. Mm, mm. And you'll see that it automatically gives you bets and statistics, because betting, unfortunately, is important. Like Bet365 is coming on board now with yeah. local matches and matchroom sport. And it's, it, it allows the punter to know who's favourite to win the match. Fair. That's fair. The, two, pretty, the highest person in Australia with the highest Fargo is actually Justin Sage. At the moment. He's got nice. a 750 roughly Fargo, which is uh, world class. And this man here is 780. So, and that's actually a fair point. It shows you that you know, Marco is mm, still mm. a great above Justin. Mm. But Justin's a uh, great above anybody else in Australia at the moment. But that's why we need to put these results in. Because the more results, the better for everybody. The yeah, last two tournaments I played and I won, there was no results put in and my Fargo actually went down. Oh, could this be a turn? He point? looked uncomfortable he getting down. Quick? Hang on a minute. He just looked uncomfortable when he got down and he and he he turned his shoulder on it. He stays down on his shots. He he jumped up on, on the stroke. He wasn't comfortable in any of his oh. feathering. I am shocked he didn't get up. Wow. He really twitched out on that one. Can Justin Campbell put punishment to this, make him pay for that mistake? Or we let him off the Ooh. hook? Man, Justin yep. must be feeling pressure right now. He knows how important this is. Time to punch that panther in the face, you crocodile. <laughs> Pretty sure Justin won't let him get away with that. Oh, did he? So the, he really jumped up, didn't he, yeah, on the stroke? We're re-watching the shot now in the commentary booth, guys, and uh, Marco got back up on the shot again, and then he didn't like it. 
I wonder he's, why he didn't like it. But his body posture looks different to all his he's other strokes. He's stunning past the middle pocket. Why wouldn't you just play toss? He's stunned past the middle. That's... Uh, okay. okay, we're back at Justin Justin's now. Justin's uh, a little bit offline. This is a six. punch shot here. Look at that. Q power. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Don't go straight. That's no, okay. That's uh, good. Do you like two rails here or just one? Mm, I like one. If you're confident two rails with a bit of spins better because you're running into the angle. I'll play toss with a bit check. Here we go. Because you see so you're running into the line. Yeah, you can yeah. stop. You can 100%. go another metre and you're on it. Yeah. That line's continuous. Matt D says, hi, Bravmos. How are you, Matt D? All right, now we've got a game. Eight apiece. And I bet you someone's going to take a time out here. I just had that feeling. Am I right? Uh, no, no one's taking a time out. No, they're, they're fighting, mate. They're Race to 13, not one time out. No, mate. So it was you and me back in the day, we've had three time outs by now. At least. At least. At least, Each. yeah. And we would have argued about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the first time we played together? I had... Tell me. I had to go bathroom really badly. It was mm. your break. Yeah. You're not and allowed to do that, Barry. It was... It was um, can't stop no, my but room. I asked you. I asked you, can I go? And what did I say? He said, no, you can't go. See, and I had to shit. hold it in the whole way. I lost the rack, and then I bolted. I almost peed myself. I can, almost peed myself. Yeah. This guy's not a quick player. Come on, Barry. You know you can't you can't try and break someone's rhythm on the break. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? You know that. what? Karma got the better of that match because that was the first time we played and I got you. You did. Oh, I remember yeah. Princess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember got that you double hill. Yeah, I remember. But dude, that. I, almost, I seriously almost peed. It wasn't. Oh, a, it you wasn't know a boy. I just had to go to the toilet. Oh, you know what? I realised that I do like you as a mate. I was actually happy for you, which not doesn't it's happen the first to me time often. We met. No, it wasn't. It was like one of the first times we ever met. Bollocks, we'd met... Actually, we met in Adelaide first when I was watching Yeah, you. no, we'd that's met a few the, times. Know, that's the first yeah. time I watched you play yeah. was when you won that big tournament in Adelaide. Mm. Was, I think it was Australian Nine or you pumped uh, Sean and, and David Reldrick. And oh, was that the 3am final? Yes, 3am in the oh, morning. Geez, I was, was sitting back drag. drinking. We didn't have yeah. any footage of filming back then. We didn't have any commentary, nothing. Yeah. I just sat there drinking and watching this guy over here. He played a shot. I'll never forget. He played rail to rail, corner to corner, screw deep screw shot. The white ball was in the corner bag here. The black, the object ball was there, and he, he potted it and screwed straight back. And I thought, how the, how the f does this guy have so much? We chip started power? that final at 3 a.m. Yeah. We started play at 9:30 that morning. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. back then we used to do double elimination the whole way through. Yeah. Robbie, that oh, mighty oh. Robbie Falvari. <laughs> 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 Oh geez, what a tournament! Well, speaking God. about speaking about good players, Mr. Michael Cacciolo is uh, making comments in the commentary booth through his, through YouTube, saying um, "Ciao, bello, Lewis." I'm guessing that means "Hi, beautiful." Ciao, Lewis. ciao, ciao, and the beast. Ah, yes, that's my other name. Unfortunately, the beast was tamed today. Yeah, no one. Matt D says, "Boom!" Didn't see him missing that uh, that black ball. Justin back in the mix. Yeah. That was a big miss, but um, look, he's human like everybody else is. We exactly. all make mistakes. Exactly. Goes to show that if your focus drops just a little bit in this game, uh, or you if know you start what? to have... You mentioned that he should have played topspin, and I think that's what he was caught between. He was trying to avoid that centre pocket. Mm. And that just might have thrown him just enough. What's he doing here, Barry? He was playing for position on that four ball now, I think. Because, yeah, he needs to get on that four, and I, I think he's a little bit high. But he's a, he's, he's a professional. What I mean by that is it, it's his full-time job to play pool, and has been for many years. He also trained in Holland he with Alex, Alex Laley. In my mind to be a professional. He's oh, yeah. a professional, I agree. Well, we only have a couple um, of people that play full-time pool in Australia. One of them is... Marco, who, who has a club mm. in New Zealand, along with Matt, Matt um, Edwards, Edwards, who also yeah. plays full time in his club. Yes. In yeah. Australia, the only person that's professional, in my mind, mm. is actually Bean Hung. She yeah. plays full time pool yes. every day. Correct. The rest of us all work full time. Mm. Mm. Uh, take Justin, for example, my, my good friend. Mm. He, he's a full time accountant. Monday to Friday, he's an accountant. Right, okay. And in his spare time at night, he calls up, he goes and practices every night. Yeah. Two, three hours a night is what he does. He trains every night. He's got a table at home, but he's got a two-shot table at home. And, and a lot of the players here, we all have full-time jobs. Uh, take me, I cut fish for a living. Mm. And, uh, and I've got a nine-foot time and table at home, and uh, I'll do maybe an hour practice. What a gorgeous table. Yeah, oh, there's a good table, yeah. Wow. Again, he tried to get on this four board. He's a little bit high. 
is in exactly the same spot, I think, than he was before. He could reach it a little better than before. And he's going to have to get creative because he's going to be crashing to these balls 14 and 11. Can he sweet screw away from him? I don't think so. I don't think so. Especially if he's stretching. <clears throat> is, do you think he's on off the blue? The two ball on the side after this? Yeah, but it's... Because it's, it's he's going to end up down pitch. He's going to end up on that bottom rail. And then they're playing a bit of toss with a little bit of left. And taking the two up the top corner. He might, he, he might flick off the bottom ball here, the 11, mm. with the white. And it might skip him around a little bit. Yes, Mr. Mac Cacciola, I'll be seeing you at Furfies in September. What a great beer. Beer? Furfies. Furfies is beer. Oh, my God. Really? What a great beer. Okay, so it's all about the shot here. Top left-hand spin. Flicking off the 11 to get on the two ball. He's going to just miss the nine off two rails. Just missing the nine. Oh, he's on the one. Bouncing out. Perfect up. shot. Yeah, all the two if, wow. if the one went crooked. Wow, that's 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 advanced knowledge right there. <laughs> As Marco, every time he sees me, he goes, that's next level. <laughs> that's <how> he, <laughs> he speaks. Loves that. That's next level. He loves saying that. <laughs> you're next level, Barry. Uh, <laughs> I told him how I drove down from Melbourne. He goes to me, you're next level. <laughs> well, <laughs> We're at the 7-Eleven before the final start. He wanted, wanted some food and whatnot, so I drove him around there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a guy buying a pack of smokes, and they were $44. $44. And he goes, dollars. He goes, what the? He says, that's next level. <laughs> you can't charge $44 for a pack of smokes. He says, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, he's taking the two ball first. Interesting decision here. Well, he's open. That's a great shot. He's just cleared everything. His comfortability to get back onto the black because he's cleared that 15 away. That was a good shot. <laughs> Maybe we should hold some comments back. Guys, in the, in the, there are some comments we've been hi holding back. Uh, it's good to make comments, but uh, maybe just don't use any swear words uh, when talking about the players. You know, we can't call players names. It's it's disrespectful. Marco is one of the best players in the world. I guarantee you, he's in the top 50 in the world right now. And uh, to be honest, it's it's great that we have him in these events. Yeah, definitely. And he does take longer than what what we're used to in Australia. But to be fair, if you watch all those professionals play, when there is no shot clock, they take forever to shoot. Take Ralph Suke for example. Gee, how slow was he back in the day? We don't get to see it because they edit it. They edit it out. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, and the stuff that we see on TV is all matchroom sports stuff, which is 30 second shot it's, clock. It's on the clock, It's yeah. not like that normally. No. Normally, pool, I played in Cyprus, I played in Greece, I played in Europe events. They, they take a l so long, they won't let you get any rhythm on the table. Um, and it, 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 it's just how it is. It's just, that's just pool. It's not a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a uh, showcase sport where you get you get graded on how good you look when you're dancing. It's it's basically the ball's either in or it's not in. It's simple as that. Mm. So you don't have to look good. There's guys out there that look terrible when they shoot him. Look at Luis Condo. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks for confirming. I feel real awkward too. So if it looks as bad as what it feels, I am in trouble. <laughs> you know that you've always been one of my favourite players. You know that. You know I don't play anymore, guys. You know that. You know, I haven't really? practiced for about 10 years. Wow. I just Imagine if you practiced how good you'd I play. I just occasionally turn up for tournaments. And you twitch a few balls you know, in and ca take on the I cash. I have been twitching balls in. Yeah. Don't worry about that. You can if you want one. Oh, hang on. Whose break is it? Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're near the end. He needs to go to the bathroom, poor guy. Look at him. He's gone straight to the toilet. I, I, I have to urinate as well. Just excuse me for a minute. Well, uh, leave, uh, leave me here by myself in the commentary booth with my friend, my good friend, Jackie. Hi. Jackie, as you all know, he talks my ear off when no one's around, but with the microphone, he's gone all quiet. <laughs> so um, it's good that they're taking a little time out. Uh, and look at that beautiful shot of the whole venue there. What a great club. How many years has this club been here, um, Jackie? Um, after March, it's uh, five years. Oh, so it's still a very young club. Yeah. It looks, feels brand new. Yeah. It's very clean. Yep. And the cloth is only like um, four months old. 
Mm. Yeah, I've been vacuum every day, every time it, when the table is dirty. Yeah. What's the name of this brand? Chow, Chow something. What's the name of the brand of the tables? The brand of the table? Stars. Oh, this is Star Tables? Star Table, yep. Oh, and so are the, I noticed you have Chinese tables here, so they're also Star? Yep, we have um, 12 Star, um, 9 ball tables, uh -huh. 8 um, Stars, Chinese 8 ball tables. Mm -hmm. And two star snooker table, yeah, professionally. Wow. Professional table, yeah. Wow. I might play some snooker later on with you. Did you play snooker? Yeah, I did. What's your highest break? 87. Okay, you didn't have to give me start. <laughs> but I haven't played snooker before. And we'll play for some cash. <laughs> I haven't played snooker for five years. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's good news for me. <laughs> but we have to use our pool cues. So Whoa. this is the guys, this is the other hustle. He right? hasn't asked me how much my highest break is. This is the other hustle. So how about you give me 30 point start? We use our pool cues, pay for $12 a frame. What's your highest rate? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> I'm not obliged to answer that question. That's not fair. I'll tell you mine. <laughs> no, well, you, just because you showed me mine doesn't mean I have to show you yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. You, Maz, huh? I didn't know you play snooker as well, Barry. Uh, I used to when I was younger. Yeah. I used to when I was younger. I, I haven't played snooker for a long time, but I, I can tell you this. I played a, a money match um, against someone uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, I was using my mess cue back then. And we played race to 13, 200 bucks, nine ball. And I, and I beat the guy three straight sets. He was a snooker player. He was actually a very good snooker player. I might mention his name. He was a good snooker player. And then he, um, he said, look, you've taken 600 bucks off me. Let's go play snooker. Yep. Uh, and um, I want a chance to get my money back. And you know me. I always give people a chance to get their money back. Yep. So we went a few days later to a club. And he picked the snooker table. Apparently, it was a tight one. I didn't know it was a tight one. Yep. And he goes, let's play the first set 200 bucks, you know, race to three. Race to three, yep. I think it's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and in the very first, and I hadn't played for years, and I used my mess cue. Mess cue. <laughs> my mess cue. What, 12, and the very first 12, frame, 12, I remember. Five mil tips. Yeah, thick, yeah. <laughs> thick and I remember the very first visit to the table, I knocked it a 50 something and played safe. <laughs> And then using a mess cue. Using a mess cue. And then I knocked in 30 something, won the first frame. The second frame, I did eight reds, eight blacks, and played safe. I knocked in 64, played safe. Yep. And then the third frame, I knocked in a 52 and played safe. The guy didn't pot a ball. I won three games straight, another 200 bucks. He's 800 bucks down. I said, listen, you want to $400 a set? He goes, no, I'm not playing you every game. Why don't you play snooker? I go, dude, it's too boring. I just find it boring. I like pool. But that was my experience playing money match with this guy. It was awesome. Played amazing. Is it in what? In, in Sydney. In Sydney. We're going back about 10 years now. 10 years. Yeah, when I was younger, a better looking and better player. Um, more sharper. So the boys are coming back now? No, not back yet. I'll, I'll, I'll... Jordan Boyd says, I'll play you, Snooker Barry. Jordan Boyd, we're supposed to play pool first. Your girlfriend's still got my money. You're going to give me a chance to get my money back. Uh, let's do it pool first, and then we can play some snooker, okay? I'm happy to play you both. Uh, I don't mind playing both disciplines at all. Um, Jordan Boyd says, unlucky this weekend, Barry. Good effort. Thanks, mate. That's the same guy. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I actually played very well yesterday. I thought I played better yesterday than I did today. Uh, you know when you just come to the tournament in the morning? Oh, by the way, it's really cold here in the morning. It's Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, I just felt from the morning I was a little bit sluggish, and I had a really tough match. What's that guy's name? I played Chris something. Chris Tan. Chris Tan plays very good pool. Very good pool. Very solid pool. Yep. Uh, Still improving. Though, I was up 3-0 without him actually shooting. And then the next three racks he ran out. I did a couple of dry breaks, and he's three apiece. What was the score? Oh, uh, one seven, seven three. Seven three. But I mean, uh, just watching him run out and then run out and then run out, and I'm thinking to myself, "Come on, I finished first in my group. This guy really finished fourth. What's happening? You know, he's not missing a ball." Tough group, maybe. Yeah, he wasn't a tough group. He was in the same group as Marco, Marco Torture and and uh, and Lewis. So sorry, sorry. He was in the same group as um, Mark, Mark Robertson, Mark and, Robertson and, and the other Mark. Yeah. Yep. So you know, it's understandable. But yeah, he he put me under some some pressure early in the day. You know, it's just how it is. Yep. Um, Jack is a beast snooker player. Yes, I know. That's why I'm asking for a start. <laughs> Keenan, that's why I'm asking for a start. I mean, if we're going to play for money, I want Jack to give me a start. He reckons his heartbreak is only 87. Come on. I really don't believe that. I made an 87 when I was in my, before I was even 20 years old. And you're going to say, that's your highest break. I don't believe that for a second. You must be a century breaker. I saw you playing against, um, what's his name earlier today? Um, uh, the man. head? Was that the guy, Jake McCartney? Uh, Jake McCartney, yep. Yeah, when you played him, you played a fantastic match. Thanks, yeah. I actually thought you were very unlucky not to win that match. Yeah, I uh, stuff, up, stuff up in the end. 
Uh, Loa says, what size are diamond tables? Diamond tables are not 4.75 inch. They're 4. Point, um, uh, four and a quarter, yes, four and a quarter. Uh, they're very tight. You can't put two balls in. But because of the way they're cut, and I've got really clean cloth, like brand new cloth on my table, they feel big. Yeah, hey Barry, Queensland too hot and Victoria too cold. Yeah, but if it's a question between hot and cold, I'd take hot any day of the week. So here we go, we're back here again. The score is 9-8 in favour of Marco. Marco took a very timely timeout. And now Justin is responding with a, hopefully, in his mind, a break and run in return to level the match. And to be fair, everything is open. This is not a hard rack. I guess the hardest shot would be now playing inside English, two rails to get on the 15. Is he going backwards? What's he doing? Backward. He's going backwards for the 13. Okay. That's also, he's dead straight here though. That's not where you want to be. Probably a school whack. I actually like, I actually like what I said, inside rails to play for the 15 more. Yeah. yeah, I was saying you were very lucky against Jake McCartney. He played very well. Yeah, I did uh, stop up a position though, yeah. You made that mistake where you hit that ball on the way out and you couldn't get shape. Wow, that's actually a really nice touch shot there from Justin. To screw back and put the ball on a, you know, 50 cent coin there. With angle now. This is going to be a really good response. And I've got Lewis Condo back in the commentary box. Welcome back, Lewis. Thanks, mate. I was just talking to Justin outside for a minute there. Yeah? He's not, not happy with Marco's um, slow, slow play. play. Yeah, he's... Yeah, it's um, not happy at all. But I asked about this earlier. I asked you earlier, Jackie, is there a shot clock? And you said, no, there isn't. So you can take 10 minutes a shot if you want. Oh, that's, a, that's not that's He's not. He's gotten best. away with it. Yeah. Well, he we should, should be okay. I do a soft screw to the six here, hold for the black. Marco is snarling at that shot. <laughs> He's not happy that Justin's ended up okay. Yeah, because we didn't have a tie spot at home. The shot clock. Yeah, so I don't want to change the condition in the final. I, I think in the future, mate, you need to implement a shot clock. Seriously, there's been three or four guys in the room that have just taken way too long to shoot. I had a match earlier, not not Lewis, a different player, and and I literally, Lewis saw me playing Nine this all. guy. We've got a match. You saw me playing that guy in the morning. He was taking literally three minutes a shot, mm. and I was, it's just it's just too long to wait between frames. I, I mean, me personally, I don't like the shot clock, but I have seen overseas and it's not implemented. But if a tournament director does see slow play, he comes over and he warns the players or the player, tries not to segregate one. Yeah. And the tournament director will give a warning. And if it continues, he will then come over with, with a watch and he'll start timing how long the guy's playing mm -hmm. or, or both of them, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And then if he's still not happy, he'll say, OK, at the end of this frame, the clock's on. What's the rules? If, if this happens, if in the middle of the match and then we start the, uh, the shot clock, what's the... What's the, the rules is it as second, a... How many seconds? Um, Five seconds to go, you're going to say warning. No, no, I think it's 40 seconds and you have... 10? Is that the standard? I think it's 40 seconds and then you have a... Uh, and then it's 15 one, one. second warning after 40 seconds. Again, That's a long time, 40 seconds to shoot. It's enough. It's That's enough. a long time. But a player can ask for the shot clock. He can yeah, call the yeah, tournament director. Ask. They can ask for what if, it. What if Justin came over now and said, hey, listen, Mr. Jackie, can you please give me a shot clock? What would you say? There's no, none advertised. Yeah. Can't do it. No, I can do it. No, he can do it if the player okay. asks. That's right. within the rules, yeah. Okay, cool. What would it be, 40 seconds? Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Well, I've been out, out of it for a while. I'm trying to it's scratch it, my It really memory. is up to the tournament. Right, okay. It might be 45, Dan, so... There's basically, there's no real rule anywhere of what length should be. It's up to the organiser No, it beforehand. is written somewhere. It is written in the WPA. In the WPA? It there is, is a written, ruling? Yeah. Well, that'd be interesting to find out what it is. Guys, if yeah. you guys out there at home know, put a mention, put a comment in the, in the comments down below. All right, Justin. Big break needed here from Justin. <sighs> that white ball was loose there. It was flying towards that middle pocket, and it's dry. Dry as a bone. Conducive with the weekends, play a lot of dry breaks. Mm. You know, normally you you're getting 65, 70 percent of the breaks you're getting balls in. Uh, that has not happened this weekend. It's, it's more like maybe 30, 40 percent. 
of the time you're getting a ball in. Well, like we said, we don't have a magic rack, so it's all hand racked. I feel like the hand racking is very, very important uh, to make sure you rack the balls correctly. It's something that I personally did not do very well this weekend. Yeah. That's why I was going second ball break most of the time, because I knew I wasn't going to get him right. Um, and it's a skill. Racking the balls is actually a skill. Yeah, it is, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys see um, some of the money match. Um, I, I would say in Philippines, uh -huh. they play 10 ball without the rack. Oh, really? But after the break, it's just like using a magic rack. What do you mean? They're not using a rack? Or they like are using a rack? When you use a magic rack, when you break, there's two sort of wing ball going into Yeah, the ones the behind the one. Offense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watch a lot of them using just triangle. Okay. But when they break, the two balls goes in. in, the, in oh. The ball, oh, so they basically said anyway, maybe they, they trained the cloth or they tapped the balls in the cloth. I'm not a fan of the stencil. I, I like I like the hand racking. You like everything done by hand, though, don't you, Lewis? Well, you know, it depends on what we're talking about. That's a great shot there from Marco. He uh, he put his ball and he opened up two, three other balls, and it's now it's just all. He he's good at finding that right shot to play. Mm. That's why it takes his time. And, and that's what he's searching for. Mm. He wants that the easy solution to op open the map up. Because Marco's not, you know, infallible. Is that the right word I'm looking for? He does feel pressure like everybody else does. You know, when he missed that black ball, he felt pressure. I, I, I think that was a pressure shot. And uh, he, he's expected to win this event because of his ranking and his stature and his name. And I think when you're in a tournament and you're that heavy favourite, it can play against you sometimes. I like being the well, other the dog. pressure's on him. <laughs> yeah. You know. He, he's, he's the one that's produced the cash. He, he's got a plane ticket. Mm. He's come from abroad. Um, yeah, the rest of the players here are all local except for me. And I drove down here from Sydney. It didn't yeah. cost me much to get down here either. But I think he's using this as a warm-up. He's, he's in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Oh, for really? The ball, yeah. The, the US Open 10 balls. Mm, mm. So I think he's using this as a bit of a, um, you know... Bit of a warm up. To be fair, like Keeping I said, the rotation games are really his forte. He's gonna dead he's gonna probably stop dead here. For the fifteen. Pocket the ten. Stop in the white dead. I like how smooth he hits the ball. It's a really long, elongated mm. backswing, isn't it? Mm. Doesn't pull it back as far as Chris Melling, but it's that sort of pace, it comes back pretty slow. Chris Melling, he's an interesting name. Ever since he's gone to that Revo Q, I feel his game has gone down two levels. He was playing so good using his 3-1-4-2 shaft. He used to play so good. He was, in my opinion, in the top five in the world at one stage. And now, since he's using the Revo, he's just lost all his touch. He's constantly out of position all the time. About the, the black shaft? Oh, you and your black shafts. I'm talking about Revo's, not black shafts, brothers. <laughs> Barry was being careful not to mention that... Not that, to mention the colour. Those two words. I don't know if you can hear it in the microphones, but it is bucketing down here in Melbourne. Yeah, raining very hard. I might have to wait. I might not drive down if it's this bad. I might wait. I might come... What time do you open the club tomorrow? Uh, 12. Money match? You and me? We'll be alright, mate. Yeah? Me? Yeah, we'll play. What do you want to play? Eight ball, nine ball, ten ball or snooker? I don't normally play money match. Come on, man. <laughs> a couple hundred dollars a, a set. It's not going to kill anybody. Lewis is up for a money match, aren't you, Lewis? But, you know, you, uh, you've won like nine Australian titles, is that right? Nine or ten? And I've won basically none, so you need to give me a start. I mean, it's only fair. I think four race to seven is fair. Oh, it's getting tight ass. <laughs> Benji Mon Wilsh says, I agree about Melling. Yeah, I, I, I really do think he's lost touch since he's gone to that Revo queue. So Gavin Douglas, who, who used to be on the committee in, in Sydney, says WPA says it's up to the tournament director what uh, time he allocates for shot clock. It's up to you. Yeah. Well, this black is going to put himself one frame in front again. 
And an excellent break and run here from Marco. He'll be staying still after the shot. Oh, no. He likes, he's one of those guys, yeah. But he's one of those guys that when he's in the zone, he'll keep his head down like for a long time after the ball's dropped. Yeah. And that cue, as you know, goes right through his chin. The, like Steve Davis in the other days, he used to run that cue right up and down his chin. Why is he breaking now? Oh, that was Justin's break before. Justin broke dry, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Here you go, he's making sure those balls are touching the best that he can for them to touch. I'll tell you one thing that should be banned from the game. While we got the while we got about a minute to leave the balls. The the Kamui, the original Kamui chalk my friend should be banned from the game should be absolutely banned it is like it's like a crayon it, it people break with that the, the the crayon goes all over the cue ball goes all over the object balls goes all over the table uh the guy i played in the morning first set in the morning was using that particular chalk and the whole table just went brown within two racks that's why they come out on the old and there was kicks everywhere now i'm playing with a new kamui chalk the new rockle yeah that's what yeah, i play yeah, with I'm yeah playing, it doesn't it's not a crayon paste like the old one. Have you seen the original Kamui? It's like a crayon. It's a lot better than the original one. Okay, that's not a good break. He's hot racked himself, but he's made a ball in the middle. It just didn't explode the way it normally explode. That ball he's making in the middle, to me, that to me almost every race. Really? Yeah. Coming wider, the closer, kicking off through the white, wide in the second ball. Well, it's good that he's made that ball because he's got the opportunity now to run this. And Strath's balls look really good. They look really good. Once he makes his 11 in the middle, the 13 and 14 pot in the corner, bottom corner, it's a really easy table to run. How many live viewers do we have at the moment, Mr. Dan Lynch? Cracked 100. It's all because of you, my friend. It's all for you, if you really want me. That's not bad, Barry. Yeah. Should have been in entertainment in my lifetime. Why am I wasting my time cutting fish? I do not know. Barry McCockney, McCock, sorry, McCockney says, Blue Diamond Chalk is shocking for sticking to the cue ball. Yeah, that also sticks to the cue ball, and also the Blue Diamond Chalk sticks to your cue. Like it just makes your shaft blue, blue shaft, like a smurf. And uh, no one's caught that joke. <laughs> this is a really nice layout, very easy layout. There's nothing hard here for a player of this guy's caliber. I'm looking to see the score going to 11-9. It'll take some kind of kick or accident for, for this not to happen. And in all fairness, you see Marco itching to that corner. What can Justin do? What does he have to do to win this match? Ooh, oh, he's played for the 10. So Marco playing here, just a stop shot. He played for the 10 ball. Uh, 9 15 down on the black. He's definitely feeling it. He's even he's walking around the table a bit faster, a bit brisker than earlier. <laughs> yes. We use a shot clock all the time. All the, yep. all the, uh, all the Q World events have got shot clocks. Uh, with the AP, not the AP, with the um, New South Wales pool, there is always a shot clock on offer, but people are usually pretty quick over there. Um, you are allowed to call on your, on your opponent if you want to, um, but I, there's never been a need. We don't have anybody that really abuses time over there. Uh, Justin's really quick, Danny Stone's really quick, Vinny plays fucking lightning quick. Uh, the slowest players would be myself and maybe Muzz, and we're not really that slow.
But yeah, you have the option of calling somebody over all the time. Yeah. But the QWorld events, you don't have the option. There's someone there timing you. And uh, and there's always like a Mr. Um, oh my God, my name. The name just. He's a good friend of mine too, and I forgot his name right now. Langer. Langer is always there with the shot clock, watching you and then letting you know what's happening. He's a um, not Kiwi, uh, Islander, yeah. What a lovely guy he is, yeah. Big heart, good bloke. And he's become one really good commentator. He started commentating a year ago, he's got that smooth FM voice. You know, when he speaks. If you don't, if you don't know what he looks like, from his voice you think he's a small little guy. He's a really big guy. He's a stain. Well, he's not up one, more than one frame yet because he missed the easier black than this earlier. He's not a guarantee to make this. He's a favourite to make this by all by means, but not a hundred percent guarantee. Let's see. Straight in the middle of the bag. And here's that quick racking we're talking about here from Justin. It's like, I know what's going through his mind now. He's, he's not happy with how slow this match is going, am I right? Well, from this point, being down 11 9, he's got to win 4 1 from this point to win this tournament. And I don't believe there was a deal done between these two players, so it's a considerable difference. 3,000 first place, 1,500 second. It's a considerable difference in prize money. Me and Marco did a little bit. Did you? Oh, wow, nice. Nice. That white ball is going des desperately close to the corner pocket. Now, yeah, 15. The 11 balls are a question. Can we get another angle, Dan, just to see if that 11 ball goes? Looks like it goes if he lands plum on it. Between the. It's not comfortable. Definitely not comfortable, but it's going to have to go stripes if he wants to get out in here. Gee, it's scary rolling the balls. Oh, it's scary rolling balls. <laughs> Both of us had the same thought there. I hate playing shots like that. Just snuff. Come on, Justin. We'd love to see this match go double hill, wouldn't we? Oh, we would. I don't. I don't think it will. I. Th I don't. No. Nah. That's the way that Marco's played in the back end of this match. I don't. No, I want to see if Justin gets out. He has to get out here. It's, it doesn't get out. He's lost the match. Simple as that. And that's what it's all about right now. No. It's gone too far. It's gone way too far. Yeah, he is in trouble. He needed to stop a good six inches before that. Gavin Douglas is playing check. Oh, it's a nice shot. Wow, he's using the force there with his hand, like a Jedi Knight to control the white ball. Like, I use the force. <laughs> That's like a really good comment. <laughs> he's not out yet. He's, he's a bit flat. He needed more angle than this. I don't like that shot. Ooh. I would have screwed. Played the forward and the other centre, but... No, in your match, it basically was the break. You just weren't getting balls at the break against Marco. He's going to roll this again, isn't he? He's rolled this as well. And he's gone behind the blue. He's plum. That's a really good out here from Justin. A really good out. Yeah. 
really good at. Yeah. They can't hear me? No. Oh, okay. Well, 11.10. Uh, Gavin Douglas asks a question. We actually answered this question earlier, Gavin. Where does Marco rate in the world stage? He's currently world number 51. Um, and in my opinion, he's, he's, he's right up there. Yeah, he's, he's world class. He's proven himself time and time again. He's also a full-time professional. Uh, he's the only full-time professional that's here. Um, and uh, yeah, he's number 51 in the world. So that's, that's, you know, we're, 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 it's good that we got him here. The only other full-time professional we have in Australia is actually Bean Hung, who works professionally in pool room in Queensland. She plays pool all day long for a living. That's awesome. Mm. It's a dream coming true for a lot of players. And she's from Taiwan. She's, yeah, she trained yeah. with she uh, Ko Pin Yi. Went through the clinic there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Put through the ringer. Which is part of their school education too. They have a cur curriculum there for pool. Yeah, it's part of this thing. You can take up chess or pool. What or are you going to choose? That's right, yeah. Going to go second ball break here. He's changed second his strategy. Ball. So look, watch the centre pocket to the right of screen. Looking for a ball to bounce out off the left hand cushion back into the centre. No, he's hit in. it full. Yeah. And got a result. Oh, the balls haven't really opened up much here. Gavin Douglas is asking, surely New Zealand should be sending him to WCOP. That was the question that we had you no know, early World Cup of Pool. World Cup of Pool is a team event, but Marco's not a New Zealander. So he's actually a Dutchman, he doesn't qualify. Can I get some nuggets? Nuggets. I see a uh, combination here, because it's open table. He can hit the five ball onto the 15, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Muzz writes, where does Barry the New Mavros sit on the world rankings of good looks? <laughs> I think I sit you know, a few points under his lowest condo, to be honest. <laughs> Got to rate these Greeks, I tell you. Thanks, buddy. No, you know what? This is not an easy, um, easy lay. They're all not... They're all like kind of congested. Yeah, I'm liking the five under the fifteen. Or play the ten under the six as an opening shot. Yeah, but then you've got that five tied up here. You can use the two to roll down and play the five. The, the, the orange corner. five. Yeah. That might be what he's thinking. He is looking that way. He's going to take his time. He's really going to take his time. Wow, bleeding on the table, scratching. Look, and his first, with all respects to Mark, to everyone, Marco's first four or five visits after a break were like this, and that's why he was yeah. taking yeah. his time. When they're there, he's at them. So he's called the Did six ball. Did he call ball. that? Did yeah. he call it? Okay. He's called the six ball, which is the shot that I liked. Yeah, you did see that. But he's going to have to get pretty straight on the two ball to roll down for the five, so... I wonder what he's thinking. Is he going to take the four in the, take the three in the middle, then the four in the other middle? What's he thinking here? Well, he's running out of options because he's only got four balls left. So he's got to, as you're saying, he's got to get sweet on that two. He's got to end up straight somehow on that two. And I just, at the moment, can't see. That is an option. You're right. Play for it so now. where he's pointing now, he's going to pocket the brown, the seven, bottom right hand pocket, and place the white where his cue is. And then what's the answer for the two? Interesting. I don't see his plan for the two after the, the five. There's the football pot in the corner over here as well. doesn't really matter if it does. Like I said, the break that he did this time, it was a second ball break, and it just, they didn't open up as much as you, they kind of like congested. This is, it's always hard when they're congested. Oh, he's really taking his time. Hunting to get to the hill. He knows that this, could be the coup de grace moment, mm. the first nail in the coffin. A if he failure gets out. here would be disaster. 
and he wanted to be a little bit low on this five. I think he's played that perfect. He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. The two will be the last ball before the black. I find with eight ball, you have to be super accurate with your cue ball. Super accurate, especially in these situations when everything's so congested. And that's why I feel the two shot players have the advantage. They're very good at soft screws, yeah. little touch, little nip and tuck shots. Mm. They're, they're, they're so good at it. Standard in line. Perfect line. Yep. Now he's going to be coming across the line of this shot, so he's going to have to have good speed control. But um, yeah, he's got he's got a really good line here. Another break and run from Marco. A lot of break and runs today. And here I was earlier today saying he's you know he's not as not best discipline was the eight ball, and um, he's making it look very easy at the moment. I wonder if you can just try, try and hold it and play the black in the middle. Is that what he's looking at? I'm not sure. He, he certainly, he's not sure either, if you ask me at this minute. Or would you just in time, come he, one rail and take the black in the corner? He, he's considering a couple of different things here. I don't know if he can actually hold it. Can he really hold it? I'd be floating over near this 14, the green 14, and just trying to back up the corner. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good option, what you're saying. He's got to hold this ball now. He's played it what really nice. Shot. Yeah. Very nice touch. Comfortable shot. What doesn't he like about this? He's looking up. I think he's getting himself ready. Yeah, he's already potted it in his mind. I think he's happy to get to the hill. I think that, that's what that look was all about. Oh, that went inside the pocket there. It wasn't dead center. Never looked like missing Barry. Come on, mate. Wasn't dead center. Never looked like missing, buddy. 12-10. Okay, at this point now, Justin's got one thing he can do. Maybe it's all over, already out of his hands. All he can do is just break and run. Just apply pressure. How do you feel about this? Doing an eight ball event, win a break. I love winter breaks. <laughs> Thank I'm you, one, love winter breaks. I've won most of my tournaments on winter breaks. <laughs> Preaching to the choir here. A good A. It's a good angle, love. Well, you know what? We forgot to thank Mr. Cubal TV over here, Mr. Dan Lynch, for coming down and filming this and bringing it to you guys live in your on your mobile phone, direct to your bedroom, bathroom, toilet, wherever you are at the moment, back of your car. Um, yeah, it's just Toilet's great. Most we've got popular. Where toilet? Is that where you watch it? That's for? where. That's where. It's <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. Thank you very much, Dan. Because <laughs> because of you, we get to see this thing all over Australia. The one thing I don't like about Justin's break is that his white ball is going a lot towards that middle, middle bag. Okay, he's got a shot on. He doesn't like it. It is a sharp picture tonight, Dan. Yeah, that's why he doesn't like it. That's a really off-angle play, Karen. Play combination. That's horrible. That is horrible. Does he have anything easier he can start with? He can ping. He wants to go smalls. He doesn't want to go stripes. Would he take this long one? Just back himself on potting it and getting out? I don't think. I, I wouldn't advise that. He might be forced to stripes here. Yeah, but if he takes stripes right now. The 13, what's he going to do with the 13? He's going to play the 7 ball here. He's lining it up. He's called it. Oh, no, you're right. The 7 ball, 13 ball went. Mm. Well, that was the right shot if the ball went, which it did. I think he's got half a pocket. The black's down in the bottom right. Intruding one of his Justin's stripes there, but he's got some options. He can either hit the 9 onto the black. And, and just cl clear a path. But he's done the right thing, he's got in. He's mm. got a ball in and off he goes. We're off to the races, the tortoise and the hare. 
He wants to be on this 14 ball. He's on the 12 ball. He's not. He's not on the 12 ball. He would have loved to have been on that ball right now. Because, like you said earlier, that's his that's his difficult ball right now. Do you think he will play some? Um, well, side? he needs to get up high in that nine. It's all about the shot. Try and come now. between the pink five and, and the thirteen. Oh, he's oh that's, which that's is good. Done. That's good. That's okay. That's all right. It could have been a lot worse, Justin. You know what? He's got a bit of distance between the white and the nine. He's going to find it a little bit hard to hold. Do you play the kiss into the four here? Is that what you do? I think that's what he's playing for. He's screwing into them. Uh oh. That's worked out plum. That's worked out okay. Oh, he's on the rail though. God, that did not look good for half a second there. So that's the difference between Marco and Justin. Marco takes more time. Mm. Just, I think his pattern plays a little better, to be honest. Oh. Uh oh. That's disaster. It's just uh, heart in your mouth stuff, you know, Justin. Um, uh, uh, yeah, this is makeable. 50 50. You either make it or you don't. Yep. Oh, I just. Um, rush of blood. It must, be, must have been a rush of blood. Heartbreaking. I noticed if we watch the replay, he actually queued into the rail. So he scraped the tip along the cushion for about an inch or so before contacting the wall. I've never seen him do that before either. Come on, Justin. Come on, Justin. Give it a bit of pace. He's done it. Yeah, boy. It. Yeah, boy. Well Good done. Shot. Yeah, buddy. Wow. That's not a bad shot, eh, for an amateur? <laughs> Do you reckon he learned that from you? <laughs> well, I reckon he might have learned that from well, you. That shot, that's that's ABC stuff. Come on. <laughs> <Harry>. <laughs> All right, now the we are lined up. You, they're the kind of shots you learn when you first start playing pool. Because <laughs> you're always out of position. You're continuously <laughs> snookering yourself. <laughs> Jackie, you heard those shots, right? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 20 bucks? Money match? <laughs> I can't get this guy to pipe me about what I do. I can't bribe him. I can't taunt him. All right, guys, we are now lined up for an ex what, exciting finish. It's either going to be a break and run here from Marco, or something's going to go wrong, 12 apiece, and then it's going to be super action, right? And we're all hoping it goes double hill. Uh, um, most of us, I think, here. You put money on Marco, did you? No? Okay. We're all hoping it goes double hill. But if you're a Dutch fan, or a New Zealand fan, or a Marco fan, or a Revo Shaft fan, that's a black shaft, you're hoping for a break and run here, so it's all about this break. Second ball is line out the second ball, I think. Mm. Hit that 12 ball fat in the face. Looking for a ball in the centre pocket. Now hit no, the one, hit the one. He's hit it full. He's made the four oh, in the corner. He's in, he's in. Well, he's got a bunch up. He's in, but it's not It's not like it was earlier. This rack is going to require some work. This will be a two minute map assessment here, ladies and gentlemen. Two minute, three minute. We've got, one of, we've got time for one of your quick stories. No stories. <laughs> No stories. I'm just trying to work out what Marco's doing at the moment here. What are his options? So automatically you'd like small balls? No, I don't actually. Because really? I can't ever see myself getting that brown seven out of there. There's too much um, traffic with the stripes. So you'd go straight balls? I would. And because you could go nine ball first and then use the 14 to open up the rest of the balls. 14's this ball here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're on the same wavelength. And it's, a, it's a gentle kiss in there. You don't need to flick, th flick that too much after pocketing that 14. In fact, m the harder you hit it, the more trouble you're in. Uh -huh. Just a gentle roll. Yeah, because if you hit it hard, the balls go on the rails. Well, yeah, you're going to send some stripes over near the yeah. six, etc., etc. So we've worked it out, guys. It's unanimous. We believe go the nine ball first. Get yourself an angle on the 14 to open up the balls. And I think that Marco is either you know, psychic because he's feeling our vibe mm. or he's, w he's worked it out himself as well. The only problem with this is that the, the opening shot is not a total guarantee. Well, he's at his level though, isn't it? Oh, I think he's comfortable with that angle. I'd be punching off two rails after pocketing the nine. I wouldn't be playing top spin on this shot. You want to give a bit of energy through, the, mm -hmm. through your queuing. It's called the nine. Why does he go to the back end of the shot and look? Is that because he's looking at position with the white? 
Oh, I'm not sure. I think he's just trying to get comfortable. Well, he's gone up again. Look, he's to no props to Justin Campbell. He's the only guy that's gone the whole distance with Marco the whole weekend. Uh, yeah. We've got the right two guys in the final here. Correct. Win or lose, Justin Campbell's played very well today, I have to say. Especially that semi-final match. And he's taken out some strong opponents all day. He's had a tough draw. Yep. And he's, the, the new rankings are out. He's actually Australia's number one ranked player at the moment. Justin? Justin Campbell. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Nice, a nice surprise for me. If you're a Justin Campbell fan right now, he's just, he's just hoping for an opportunity at the table. Marco's taking a really long time with this, guys. This is, this is what I'm saying about... I would have loved to have seen a shot clock here. Maybe. I, I just, every player is different, Jackie. You know, I, I'm believing in punching this in and using two rails. When you're punching it in, you can hit it with a bit more authority. Authority. You want to avoid any twitching moments or, or avoid the predicament. Any, any slow striking, you've got to try and avoid it. He's going, he's on the right side of the 14 here. What's he doing? Oh, I don't like this shot. He's on the wrong side of the 14. He's tapped the table. He's not happy with it. No. He's have to go plan B now. He's not maybe, happy with it. Yeah. yeah, maybe. And I don't mind the white coming into the pack that way. If he pockets the 11, because he's forcing all these balls towards where there's no traffic. He is looking at it, yeah. And he's Which is tough. has not decided. He's torn. He has got a lot of options here. He can just can does he have angle though to go into him? He must have a little bit of angle. He does, yeah. He he can come back around on the fourteen too after pocketing what? pocketing that. Is it the eleven? He must be straighter than what from his body language, it looks like he's straighter than what we think he is. No, I'm looking at the table live. I've just Got me eyes shot through. He can screw into the pack. Using he, the 11 ball, okay. Yeah, and All he right. can also come around off two cushions and try and get back on the right angle of the 14, too. That's a really good shot there of Justin sitting down with his. You know, when people fold their arms like that, that's actually a comfort thing. Well, they're cutting off the blood flow. Mm. It's not, not recommended. Not good, not, not, good, not for good for queuing, not good for Paul. Not recommended. Screwing into the 13 ball here. He must get a connection here. Very nice. Very nice connection. Is he on a ball? He's on the 14. Uh, he's yeah. on the 14. Yeah, it's on the table. I wouldn't say he's in great position for it, but... Yeah, the 10's the ball to take now. He's on it. He could be on the 10. Oh, he's looking good. He's in good shape. He's on the 10. He's going to play the white ball where he's showing us now for the 13. He's in very good shape here. This match is almost over. Don't fall on the pink on the orange five with your tummy. What tummy? My <laughs> tummy. <laughs> yeah, you and me have got stomachs. He's got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, how long has it been? 20 years since I've had a tummy like that? Well, we are 20 years older than Marco. We are. So, yeah. We'll see him when he's in his mid-40s, what he looks like. Mm. Worried about touching the five, but he's, he's far away from it. I can see from here. Very nicely done. And angle on the 13. He's loving life at the moment. If something's going to go wrong, it's going to happen after this shot. Thank you, sir. How much is that? That's the only, op this is the only opportunity for something to go wrong, is it this shot? Barry? Well, it's the 15 Damn. ball's kind of covered by the black, so he needs Damn. to get on this 15 as well. I don't think he's on the 15 now. He's on the 13. Wow, really taking his time. 
as you you would do in a crucial situation mm. like this. I mean, is you know he may not get another visit to the table, doesn't break and run here, so it's very important he gets out here. Is he going to play tosspin and kiss the black here? Would that be the sure. shot? Would that be the shot? He's under hit. This no, is the shot. Good. It's it's good. good. He's a little low, but I think this is where you would play the kiss into the 12. Yeah. And hold for the four aim. Mm. That's what he's looking at right now. Wow. Really applying that chalk to his cue. Checking the line that he wants, which is fair enough, because he if he ends up just missing the kiss under the third lane, he can he's end in up. Trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, playing chalk for the third time here, guys. This <laughs> is. <laughs> it's a fifteen. I played chalk for the. Fourth it's a fifteen hundred dollar chalk up, isn't That's it? That's true. <laughs> it's the difference between fifteen hundred or three grand. Justin's, They're going to talk up on Justin's more time. besides Just himself, for good measure. which is fair enough. Justin's moved away from the line of shot. He must get a good kiss here. He hasn't. That's okay. He hasn't. Oh, oh he's, he's around done. It. He's hit it at he's a place where he's it. okay. Damn. Do you think he played to go around it? No. No way. He, he kept lining up the kiss. Wow. I personally think he played to hit the cushion first and, and hit the 12. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, Whatever the case was, he played a really good shot, good speed, mm. made a good pot. Good speed. And he's, he deserves a good roll. <gasps> oh, I thought he hit that thick. I really did. <laughs> Game set and, and match. And now a stop shot for the black, mm. and it's all over. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, it's been great to Thanks, Barry. Do, this, do this with you one more time. I enjoyed it, mate. I hope we do it again in the future together. I love it. It's all good stuff. Let's not... 13-11, um, barring... The fat a lady hasn't kick. sung, count the chickens before they hatch, all that sort of stuff. Oh, I think it's, this is over. The way he's played today. Stop shot. Plum. And Jeez, there's head. that Three elongated seconds. head down. Yeah. Justin ready, getting ready for the handshake. Marco just called the black in the side. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Marco. Clinical performance from 5-2 down. Played absolutely flawless. Well done. Congratulations. There's a fist bump. And a very good sportsman from Justin. Justin, you played very well, mate. Held your head up high. You played very All well. All day. All day. All day. You took out some great opponents who played fantastic pool. Uh, thank you very much, Jackie Lai, for allowing me to do the commentary here and also for paying me, which I really appreciate. Thank you, Focus Billiards, and Carl, Jackie, everyone. Dan, you're the man. You are the man who can and has a master plan for pool in Australia. And, and just Lewis before, Congo, thank you, Barry. You're a legend, living legend. Today was some top-class pool. It really was. These two guys went through the field and it was some high-class stuff. Oh, thanks, Barry, Stanley, and you're very welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you out there, guys, for watching. Without you, it's just not fun. So thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Till next tournament. Bye for now.
that's that ball rolled off in the middle eight. Association of Fuji and thanks Focus Billiards Club and thank you Dan Lynch, Cubo TV and Commentary Mary, Mary Marvels, all the way from Sydney. You're welcome. And Louis Kondo helping out commentary as well. Um, well done to Marco Tosha from all the way New Zealand. You played really well today, and bad luck, Justin, run up. And we do, um, Luis Conto, third place as well. We do the, the trophy presentation as well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 